Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my tutorial on how to make a featured content plugin for WordPress. But also, along the way, we're going to learn how to create a featured content tool that you can use on pretty much any type of website. If you didn't watch part two of this tutorial, definitely check that out. Otherwise, you'll be lost. There's a link in the underbar for all of the code that is used in this tutorial. And over here on the right side of the screen, you're going to see exactly what we're going to be creating this time. Whenever this page is loaded, automatically this first guy's opacity is shrunk down or taken down by 40 percent this information is going to update both here in the title as well as here in this description excerpt as we click on these different guys and you're going to be able to do it in any way possible and in later tutorials i'm going to have this automatically scroll but to keep this understandable i want to keep this kind of short so right here what we have is from the last tutorial what was called featured content php this is all that was created in the last tutorial so i'm going to come in here and start adding a couple things because i'm going to use jquery basically there's going to be a style sheet there's going to be a php file and there is going to be a jquery or javascript file i'm going to have to include for now the jquery library and how you do that and along the way in this tutorial on purpose I inserted code that would answer a lot of the questions that I've been getting in regards to how to use jQuery so this is how you link out to the source for the jQuery libraries and this is considered probably the best way to do this rather than loading it right on your server because Google's going to provide access to these libraries very quick and efficiently based off of where you're located at in the world and if you want to see more on jQuery, I'll provide a link to that tutorial as well on the screen. But that's basically all you have to do right there is add in that code right there. And if you can't see it, this is where you locate that. But again, code's in the underbar. So now I'm going to have access to the jQuery library. And I also want to link out to my source code that contains my JavaScript code. And this is how you do that. Again, text forward slash JavaScript. And then the location of that code. And I have it in a folder located in the same place as featured content, but the name of that folder is JS. And I gave it the same name, but you wouldn't have to, but of course you'd have to change it here. So that's how we would link out to that JavaScript code that we need. And then I'm going to come down here to this part, NTT article title. That is this guy up here. And by default, I'm just going to have this for now. Again, whenever this becomes a WordPress site, this is all going to change. But what I did was I put the word shark in here because that's the first thing that loads on the screen. So I had to make that change. And then really there's not that many other different changes except here in the article excerpt area, which is this guy right here. I'm of course going to want that to change based off of whatever information's inside of here. And it's going to be real easy to do. I'm just going to create a bunch of paragraph tags. And this is important. I'm going to give them a title. So whenever we come in here and we open up our images here on the screen, you can see WordPress, what it's automatically going to do is, let's say I upload something called elephant.jpg. What WordPress is going to do is it's going to automatically create this thumbnail for me that's 60 by 60 and any spaces that I have in my file name it's going to automatically put a dash and like I said this thumbnail is going to be automatically created so I upload elephant.jpg it turns it into this and in situations where I would update polar bear the image would automatically have a dash in here if I put a space inside of there so that's something that's important for later on but of course if you didn't quite get all that don't worry about it we'll get back into it so basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a bunch of paragraph tags that are all going to have special information pertaining to what I have here on the screen. And to save time, I'm just going to do a view source on this because all I'm doing is really copying and pasting. And I'm going to come down to here and I'm going to copy all the information that's in this excerpt and I'm going to plug it in here between paragraph tags. And then I just have to do the same thing for polar bear, penguin, elephant, and ape, which are all my different parts. So, and what the heck, for this tutorial, I'm just going to copy this and leave these all be the same. These excerpts would all be different, of course, but in this situation, just to be quick, I'm going to let them all be the same. So then again, I'm going to make this polar dash bear. And remember, I have that dash in there because it's going to help me out later on whenever WordPress automatically creates all these files. And the next thing I want to show up is the penguin. And the next thing is the elephant. And the last thing is the ape. Got all those in there. And whenever we do this in WordPress, this is all going to be automatically generated based off the name of the image that they upload. And then I'm going to come down to the read more section. And we can get rid of this for now because this is going to be a link that's going to actually take them to the article. So here we're just going to speed the process up here and create the link right now. I don't know what it's going to be yet for this situation because there are no articles. So I'm just going to put this little default inside here and I'm just going to give it an alt tag of article and then I'm going to come in here and close off that link all right and a lot of the stuff's done now I got to come down into the NTT featured pick that's going to be this this div right here that's going to contain all my pictures and I just need to make a couple little changes inside of here which is to point at all of the images that I uploaded or that I want linked 
to my featured content bar and I have a folder called images and then I called it ape.jpg and then alt, I'm just gonna call this ape, right like that. I'm gonna have to do that for all five images and this toolbar or this featured content tool is going to work no matter how many images they put in there. So if they put in one or two or three, there's gonna be a maximum of five just because that's the way I laid it out, but there is no minimum. It's gonna automatically adjust based off of whatever was done. So then I gotta just put in all these descriptions. There's polar bear and here's shark. All right, so I got that done. Really, there's not much more to do except I need to put the thumbnail images in here on this bottom bar. So right after left button, which is this button right here, I'm gonna come in here and create some more classes or more divs. I'm just gonna copy this for now, right like that. And then I'm gonna change some of the things inside of here. This is gonna be called NTT thumbnail frame. And then my source is actually going to be taken from up here. I'm gonna grab this guy and paste that over top of that. And then I'm gonna give it a class featured thumb. Close that off. I'm gonna change this alt text right here to ape picture. And then on top of that, I'm going to give it a title that is equal to ape. Well, now I can copy this and add in all the other thumbnail images with their special alt tags and all their information. After ape, elephant, 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 make sure you put in these quotes, otherwise that'll mess up a whole bunch of things. Then I gotta do the same thing here for penguin, penguin, and let's just copy that in. It. And then we're gonna go polar bear, alt, is going to be polar bear and yeah, polar bear these quotes and then finish it off with the shark shark picture shark title and because these are thumbnails that are 60 by 60 what do i got to do here i'm going to come in and use the exact same formatting that wordpress uses so it's 60 by 60. And again this is all created automatically for me and then just paste all those in there right like that and that is all that we need to change in regards to the php file to make this guy work now comes the heavy lifting, the JavaScript file. This next file is going to be a jQuery JavaScript file. So how you call jQuery, you start it off with this ready function. And basically what this says is this is called whenever the page is loaded and it's ready for you to add all your jQuery. And it always ends right like this so that we close off all our braces. And then what I'm gonna do first off is I am gonna have all of my excerpts all lay on top of each other and I'm gonna have all these pictures here lay on top of each other. So I'm gonna come in very first thing and I'm gonna target those excerpts that are put there and I'm gonna make them invisible. So in jQuery, how you do that is dollar sign and then the class for the excerpts is called NTT article excerpt. And if you remember previously, I was putting in paragraph tags, so I just put a P inside of there and that will target all those excerpts. Then I'm gonna change the CSS styling on them and I'm gonna make the opacity equal to zero. So that means they're not going to be seen on the screen. That's all that does. Then I'm gonna target the very first excerpt that is in there. And if you don't remember what I'm talking about, these are the excerpts that I'm talking about. I'm gonna lay them all on top of each other and I'm gonna make only the first one visible. All the other ones are going to be invisible. And I'm gonna say that I wanna animate the first excerpt and I'm going to give it an opacity of one, which means 100%. And I could also make it come on the screen in a fade. If I just put that in there, that would take a one second to load that excerpt or two seconds, but I'm just gonna leave that off because it kind of looks cheesy. Then, in a later tutorial, this is going to come in very handy. And this is also thrown into this tutorial because I've been asked this a bunch of times. If you want to find out how many child elements are in a div, in this situation I'm targeting these five thumbs down here, this is what you do. You go NTT, thumb, box, and then we're going to specifically target the div that is inside of there and the number of images that are inside of there. And then you say length. And this right here will tell you how many images are contained inside of this div. This is how you figure that out. What I'm gonna do just for now is to subtract one because I don't care about this arrow that is right here. Later on in the next tutorial, we're gonna get into exactly using that, but just wanted to show you that for now because I get that all the time, how to find out exactly how many elements are inside of a div or whatever, and that's how you do it. And then here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dim this first thumb by default. So I gotta target that guy. And it's a div, and then I'm gonna say nth child in the div. And then this is another question I get constantly. Okay, we have first child thumb. How do we use that variable inside of jQuery? This is how. This is a opening quote, single quote, and this is a closing one. If you wanna insert a variable in jQuery, that's how you do it. You have to close this front part off, put a plus sign, then your variable. I've gotten that question probably 30 times, if not more. So that's how you use variables inside of jQuery. 
and you just want to close that off. I'm going to say that I want to change the opacity on that first thumb to 40% when it's loaded on the screen. And that's how you do that. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create another class and I'm going to specifically tie it to whatever thumb is currently active. Another question I get constantly. Div, again, nth child. Oh, I don't know, I just copy this. Paste. And this is how you add a class to an element. I'm going to call it selected. I like that. No other reason. And then whenever this thumbnail is actually clicked on, or any of the thumbnails are clicked on, I'm going to need to dynamically change the title, the excerpt, this picture up here, the read more tag, all these different things. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we want to come in here. And I'm actually going to copy this right up to this point. Save myself a little bit of time. I'm going to specifically target the image. And I'm going to say, if it is clicked, I want to run everything contained in this function. And E is a reference to whatever was clicked. And then I'm going to do a whole bunch of things. I'm going to set all my thumbs back to their default meaning that I'm going to remove selected from all of them. I'm going to remove the decrease in opacity and everything else that's going on. So if I want to target every single images or every single div inside of that guy, this is how I do it. And first I'm going to remove class. So now you know how to make something have a certain class and you also know how to get rid of that. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this on the divs and the images. There you are. And that comes into play later on as well. And then I'm just going to copy this. And remember, I'm going to set opacity back to default. Let me give myself some space. So I want to animate. It's kind of like taking the animate off, actually. And I just want to set the opacity back to 100%. So, got that. And this is going to be animate. And actually, this is all the same. So that's going to make all the thumbs their default. Real nice and easy. Then, I'm going to actually target the thumb that was just clicked. That's where E comes into play. So I'm going to say this, which means this thumbnail that was just clicked on that triggered this function running all together, I want to add the class selected to it. This, and I'm going to take this guy right here, copy that, paste it here. I want to make the opacity equal to 40%. So that's going to make this dim or these thumbnails dim whenever these images are clicked on. Then I'm going to create a variable. And this is when I start changing everything else that's on the screen. And I'm going to say pick title. And I want to say this attribute, the attribute for the thumbnail was clicked, specifically title. I want to get that and save that to a variable that's called pick title. And just so you know what I'm doing, here are the thumbnails down inside of here. So you're going to see, I want to grab, there's alt, there's title, there's the source for the actual image, all of these things. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say, okay, I want all this information from this thumbnail that was clicked. Okay, so that's where that's coming from. So that's where I'm getting the title from. And then I want to find the destination for the full size picture that I'm going to put up here in the featured picked area. So I'm going to create another variable. It's going to be called picked full size. And it is equal to, again, this dot the attribute that I want in this situation is source. So this is the location for the thumbnail. That's not actually what I want. I want the original. So I'm going to create another variable called photo preview picked full size. And then I want to replace the 60 by 60 that is tied on to the end of the thumbnail automatically by WordPress. Or if you're doing this as a straight HTML, of course, you'd have to put that on there or figure some other way around it. And then I want to change the main title above the excerpt. So how I target that guy is, again, this is jQuery stuff dot NTT article underscore title. And if you want to change the HTML that's inside of one of these guys, this is how you do it. And this is also how you use a variable to do that. Okay, so that's going to automatically change this based off of what thumbs picked on. That just that little tiny bit of code. And then I want to also target all the featured picks. Remember, these are all laying on top of each other. There's five of them there, but only one of them has an opacity of 100. That's why you only see that. So I want to target all those featured picks. This is the featured pick div. And then this is the image. Here I'm going to make all of them have an opacity of zero. And this is also going to change in the next tutorial, but... For now, this is going to work. Because remember, I'm going to have these all automatically change. And this needs to be changed. But you guys have been sending me messages saying you'd like to see me develop applications or develop tools or whatever. And at least whenever I do that, I often just make parts of things work and then go back and change them later on. I just find it easier. And then here I'm changing the featured pick based off of whatever thumb has currently been clicked. So that's what it's doing. It's getting the source and that's how it's changing all that. Scroll up and I'm going to copy this because I'm going to take the opacity up on the featured pick, and I'm going to do that by calling the animate jQuery function opacity. It's going to be 100% or 1.0. And then this time I'm going to say, uh, take a second to do that, just to add a little bit of flair. 
Then I'm going to create another variable. Variable pick name for excerpt. That's a little bit long, isn't it? And then this is going to be picked title. And I'm going to change it to lowercase. This is a JavaScript function. It's just going to make all the letters lowercase, that's all. And it's going to replace all spaces with dashes. Because remember, the JavaScript file automatically creates that image for me, but it puts dashes in there for all the spaces. And then I'm going to make all the paragraph excerpts also disappear. I just plug in the name of the div, and that's these guys right here, by the way. These are all paragraph tags. Capacity is equal to zero. And then I want to specifically turn the opacity up for the paragraph associated with the same title as the main picture. So how we do that is actually kind of neat. If you want to select a specific paragraph based off of the title of that paragraph, this is how you do it. Put a colon inside of here, bracket, and then just say title is equal to, and then close off this single quoted part because we're going to plug in a variable. And then we want to continue on. Bracket, close that off. Opacity is equal to 100%. So here I'm making the excerpt that appears over here 100% opacity while all the rest are zero. And then this function actually is done. So we can close this off. And then what I got to do is for now I'm going to create a function that's basically its only real reason for existing is it's going to open the featured pick if it's clicked on here. See? I'm like I clicked on that and there, so you know, open that up. Later on, this is either going to open up a movie or a picture gallery or an article. But for now, I'm going to have it do that. And later on, I'm going to add additional features. Featured, pick. So I'm saying here, I want to target this featured pick right here. And it's an image. And I'm going to add an event to it. If it is clicked, I want this function to be run. I'm going to create a variable and it's going to be called picked location. It's going to be equal to this which is a reference to the picture that was clicked. And I'm going to get the source for that picture. And then I'm going to actually force the person to be sent to whatever page or whatever contains that source. And this is how you do it. You go location, attribute, and you change the href attribute in this situation to pick the location. And that will automatically move them to another part of the internet. And then we close off that function. And that's all your jQuery code. So if you need it, it's in the underbar. Just go get it, download it, whatever. It's free, obviously. And then the final thing I got to do is come in and change a little tiny bit of the style sheet. And when I say little tiny bit, I mean little tiny bit. This is from the previous tutorial again. What we're going to do is the article excerpt. I'm also going to have to target the new paragraphs that we put in earlier. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. Come in here. We might change this later, but for now this is perfect. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have all these excerpts lay on top of each other inside of the NTT article excerpt div. I'm just going to go top and everything's going to be zeroed out and nothing else is going to change here. And remember we changed this read more guy here to a link. So we're literally going to come in here and change that to an A. And then the only other thing I want to do is I don't want the underline to show up since it is a link. Text decoration, change that to none. So got that handled. And then the featured picks also, remember, they're going to be laying on top of each other. So I need to make some changes there. So I'm going to copy this. And inside of the div called NTT Featured Pick, I want to target the images with jQuery. That's how you do that. This is all going to stay the same, except this is going to be changed to zero. And everything else is going to stay the same. So that's how you make this featured content tool that we have here on the screen. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to clean this up and make it automatically scroll and do a whole bunch of other things. Till next time.